Today I'm reading From 60 Saints for Girls by Joan Wyndham. This is A Legend of the Flight into Egypt. When our Lord was nearly two years old, he was living with Our Lady and St. Joseph in their house in Bethlehem. It was the same house they were in when the three wise men came to see them, bringing presents to the baby Lord. Now, King Herod was very, very angry when he heard that there was a new king born in Bethlehem. He wanted to be the most special and important king in the land. And if there were two kings, they would have to share importances. And he didn't want to do that. So he summoned his counselors and he said, as those three wise men haven't come back to tell me where the new baby king is, I suppose they must have gone home another way. So do any of you know where he lives? Because I want him killed. When I asked the wise men, they said Bethlehem, but now they have tricked me once. That might be a trick too. None of the counselors knew exactly where Our Lady and St. Joseph lived, but one of them said, My brother heard the three wise men talking about Bethlehem, Your Majesty, so I suppose they must be somewhere near there. The only thing to do, said horrible King Herod, is to kill all the baby boys that are two years old and less than two years old, because he is sure to be one of them, and then I can still be the most important king. The counselors thought this was a rather bad idea, but they didn't say so in case King Herod had them killed too, as he did, if people didn't always agree with him. So Herod sent for one of his officers. Take your soldiers, he said, and go to Bethlehem and kill every little boy there is who is two years old or less than two years old. It doesn't matter who they are, rich or poor, kill them all and start first thing tomorrow morning. That night, while the soldiers were packing up ready to go to Bethlehem, God sent an angel to St. Joseph, who was asleep, and the angel said, Get up quickly and take Our Lady and the baby Jesus and go to Egypt. Herod is sending his soldiers to kill all the little boys tomorrow, so go now and stay there until I come and tell you that it is all right again. So in the middle of the night, St. Joseph went and woke up Our Lady, and while she was packing up a few clothes and some food, they couldn't take very much because of carrying it, and dressing the baby Jesus, he went out to the stable to get his big donkey. It was a very big donkey, like a pony, not like the little seaside ones, and it had a dark brown stripe all the way down its back from head to tail, and its name was Pharaoh because it came from Egypt. St. Joseph usually called it floppy ears because its ears were so big and floppy, and Our Lady called it soft ears because they were so soft to stroke. Well, St. Joseph woke up Pharaoh, who wondered why they were going out in the middle of the night, and put on the saddle so that Our Lady could ride it when she got tired. Then he hung two big baskets, one on each side of the saddle, to put the food and clothes in. Then he led Pharaoh round to the door and told him to wait a minute while he went in to help carry out the bundles for the baskets. Are you ready? He asked Our Lady, because we must hurry. It is nearly tomorrow when the soldiers are coming. I'm just coming, said Our Lady, and she popped two wooden animals that St. Joseph had made for Jesus into the basket, just as St. Joseph was carrying it downstairs. She picked up Jesus and wrapped a shawl round him and hurried down and found St. Joseph putting rags round Pharaoh's hooves so that he would not make a noise on the stony street. They walked all the night, and by morning they were miles and miles away from Bethlehem and on the way to Egypt. It takes four days to walk from Bethlehem to the nearest bit of Egypt, so they had to sleep on the way. Once they came to a shepherd's hut on the side of a hill, and the shepherd let them spend a night there, but mostly they had to walk over hot, dusty desert. St. Joseph was carrying their water in a goatskin, and he was getting very worried about whether they would have enough water to last them out because it was so hot, and they kept getting so thirsty, and Pharaoh drank such a lot at once when it was his turn. At last they saw two palm trees sticking up out of the sand. Good, St. Saint Joseph, there must be some water there or the trees wouldn't grow. Now we can rest in the shade and I will fill up the goatskin. Pharaoh pricked up his floppy ears and began to trot because he wanted to rest in the shade too. But under the palm tree, there was a band of robbers who had got there first. They were all asleep because they had been robbing all night, except the two youngest who were keeping guard. The names of these two were Dismas and Gestus. When Dismas and Gestus saw Our Lady and St. Joseph coming toward them, Gestus said, Look, let's rob these people. They've got some big bundles and a strong donkey. If we take their water too, they will die of thirst and they can't tell anyone. Let's wake the others and make an ambush. An ambush is when people hide behind things and pounce out on you. No, don't let's, said Dismas. They don't look very rich and we've robbed quite a lot of people lately and the lady looks very tired. Let's warn them instead. 
Well, said Gestas, I do call that a silly idea. What's the good of being a robber if you don't rob? Well, if I give you my share of last night's robbings, will you let them go? Asked Dismas. All right, I suppose so, said Gestas. So Dismas ran out to meet Our Lady and St. Joseph and warned them. Our Lady thanked them very much, and St. Joseph said, We are very short of water. Do you think you could fill our goatskin for us without waking the others? Dismas went to fill it, and when he came back, he looked at the baby Jesus and said, I love your baby. He's the sweetest one I've ever seen. What is his name? And Our Lady said, His name is Jesus, and someday he will reward you himself for what you have done for us today. Dismas couldn't think what she meant. I don't suppose I shall ever see them again, he said to himself as he watched them going out of sight. But when our Lord was grown up and was crucified, you remember the two thieves who were crucified at the same time? Well, one was Gestus and the other was Dismas. And Dismas was the one who asked our Lord not to forget him. And our Lord said to him, today you shall come to heaven with me. So he had a very special reward after all, didn't he? Because he was the only person, except Gestus, the bad thief, who doesn't count because he wasn't looking, in the whole world who had died looking at a real crucifix, not just a statue of one. He hung on his cross, looking at God himself crucified on his cross. And so he forgot his own pain and just loved Jesus until he died. And then he went to him in heaven. And if you can think of a more perfectly lovely way to die than that, I would like you to let me know. When the Holy Family got to Egypt, they found a very cheap house to live in at a place called Heliopolis near Cairo. It had to be cheap one because St. Joseph had earned all his money in his carpenter's shop and they'd had to leave that behind. I wonder who looked at it after it for them. <clears throat> anyway, Our Lady had brought the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh that the wise men had given the baby Lord, so she sold those. They were very valuable and they had enough money to live on. The wise men would have been very glad if they had known how useful their presence had been. They had only been in Egypt a few months when the angel came back and said, it's all right now, King Herod is dead, so you can go home again. So they packed up all their things once more. We do not know how they went back. There wasn't such a hurry this time, so perhaps they went back by the sea in a boat. It would have been nicer for them, not so hot and dusty as the desert and no robbers and ambushes and things. But when St. Matthew was writing about it, he didn't say, but they never got back to Bethlehem at all, after all, because on the way they heard that King Herod's son Archelaus, who was now king, was just as horrible as his father, so it would be safer to live far away from him. So St. Joseph said to God, where is a good place to go that will be safe for Jesus and Mary? And God said that he'd better go to Galilee because another of Herod's sons ruled there as the Prince of Wales ruled in Wales, and this other son, called Herod Antipas, didn't bother much about his subjects. So they went and lived in a town called Nazareth in Galilee, and St. Joseph had a new shop to be carpenter in, and he made more little wooden birds and animals for the little Jesus to play with until he grew big enough to learn to be a carpenter himself. Now there is a special day belonging to this story too, and I will give you three guesses whom it belongs to. Our Lady? No. St. Joseph? No. Not even Dismas, the good thief, because he has his own special day. Well, it belongs to all those little boys who were killed in Bethlehem. What lucky little boys they were, weren't they? They had very little time to wait before heaven was opened for them, and they had no chance of den denying our Lord, as some of them might have done if they had grown up and been there when he was crucified. And they were martyrs, too, because they died for our Lord's sake, although they couldn't help it. So they are called the Holy Innocents, because they were too little to sin, and their special day is the 28th of December, quite near Christmas, when our Lord is little, too. The End